Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to everybody. This is Abu Maniri Ismail David, CEO of National Zakah Foundation. Uh, Jazakallah khairan for joining us tonight. Um, we're having a session where we're talking about uh, on Are You Okay Day. So we're starting ours with Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Are you okay? And we hope to, uh, um, especially with the lockdowns in most of the cities in Australia, we thought it might be a good opportunity for us to to just have a quick, uh, have a chat and get some tips and advice uh, from uh, our esteemed guests. Tonight we have three guests on and uh, we had some feedback today. We have got quite a few people who's interested in giving us some of the advice and tips and how to cope with the lockdown and how to stay uh, um, mentally in a good shape. Alhamdulillah as Muslims, this is uh, important for us. And um, we often talk about uh, uh, in, in Islam when, when it's Mother's Day or Father's Day or any day, people often say, you know, like we as Muslims, we don't really celebrate these days, which is fine, we don't. Uh, we do this every day. But then most of us don't do that every day. So sim similarly with Are You Okay Day, which is fortunately not a religious aspect to it, um, we, we as Muslims should often, we should, be asking each other, are you okay? Uh, a minimum of every three days, so to speak. So this hadith of the Prophet said that if you go to the masjid and uh, you're often in the masjid and there's a brother that you haven't seen for two or three days, it is incumbent upon you to follow up and see how the brother's doing, why is he not there, he might be sick or something like that. So are you okay? Checking in with people is something that is part of our religion. So if we... Uh, uh want to talk about Are You Okay Day? So we take this opportunity just to refresh and remind ourselves how important it is for us as, as, as family members, Muslims, and as friends to just check in on each other and how you go because we never know how people are, you know, until you ask them. And sometimes you just assume that things are okay. So we don't want to make it too, too, too dark, so to speak, tonight. So Alhamdulillah, we will start with uh, uh, my esteemed colleague, the National Zakat Foundation, uh, Brother Manir Abdullah, um, who is the national manager of our distribution team and also uh, 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 provides can provide us some advice from an Islamic perspective and some, some wisdom a, a, from an Islamic perspective on this particular subject. Tafadal Manir. Zakallah khair, Brother Ismail. Bismillah, salat salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa we ask every and each person if you like if you are, are you okay are you fine are you really okay um it's very important that we um you know check on each other uh you know know our um you know um strength and and, and you know ask those who are uh might be suffering quietly it's very important and and this is the sunnah of rasul um the reason we do it as Rasulullah said in the hadith, uh, the ummah is like one body. If one part hurts, then the whole body suffers. Um, for this reason, subhanAllah, uh, we need to check on each other so that, you know, because we have rights upon each and every one of us. If you have a neighbor um, next door, please go and ask them. And this is the sunnah of Rasulullah. In fact, you know the Sahaba. In fact, the, the 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 scholars of Islam they say up to up to forty neighbors. You need to actually check if they have food in on their table, not just um, if they are okay, but to check on on everything. Subhanallah. Up to seven is known, but some scholars they say up to forty uh, neighbors. Not forty in one side, but forty in uh, in your in your right and in your left and in the back and and the front. Subhanallah, which means the entire community. Uh, how amazing is Islam, subhanAllah. And this is not just at uh, Are You OK Day, but in fact, it is, this is uh, this should be the act of uh, daily life, subhanAllah. So um, we're here to say, are you OK? Uh, not just to, uh, you know, through our words, but through our action as well. Jazakallah khair, Brother Munir. So um, just for some education there, so the, 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 how there was a time in the process that talked about to the companions about the neighbor. So two things, what were they worried about when the Prophet emphasized the neighbor? And secondly, can you explain who is your actual closest neighbor from an Islamic perspective? 
Well, um, Rasulullah said in a hadith, Jibreel used to come to him and, you know, um, talk to him about their neighbors intensively until Rasulullah said, until I thought maybe my neighbors have, has the right to actually inherit me. It shows that like your neighbor is part of your family. So you have three types of neighbors, right? First one is the one next to you. So they have one right. Your next one have one right. But if the next neighbor, um, your neighbor is a Muslim and they have, you know, the brotherhood of Islamic brotherhood, which is one haq, one right, and also the neighborhood haq. So two rights again, subhanAllah. So it's very important. And then if this neighbor is your relative, your cousin, your, your family member, then you have three, they have three rights uh, upon you and they, 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 they have, uh, and you have three rights upon them. So subhanAllah, it shows that um, everyone is included and, and the reward comes with uh, who the next person is. Jazakallah khairan. So as we can see, my brothers and sisters, the importance of neighborhood uh, in Islam. Um, so it's important for you, especially when you have neighbors that are elderly or, or for those that you know they live by themselves, is to check on them and see that they are doing okay. Jazakallah khairan. So we will go now to uh, Sister Reem Khan, who uh, is the uh, owner and um, uh, of Dream Fitness. And Sister Reem is going to give us some uh, advice um, on how to stay physically uh, and mentally fit and how to eat well. Um, Sister Reem, just keep in mind that there's some people that's not at the level of fitness. So include all of the, the categories. I will, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Miss Ismail, I'll start off by asking you, how are you? Are you okay? Alhamdulillah. I'm okay, alhamdulillah. Yeah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You're very welcome. Alhamdulillah. Um, so, yeah, you know, what we've seen in lockdown is I think we've all witnessed this really fast-paced, fast-moving <laughs> world come to a complete standstill. And that's not just in, you know, on a large-scale communal level, but individually in our lives as well. Like, Prior to lockdown, we always had a place to be, somewhere to go, something to do, whether it was, you know, picking up kids from school, doing the groceries, uh, people who work are always stuck in traffic. It was always, you know, we were always on the go. And now in our, even in our individual lives, we've just, you know, we're told to lock down in our homes, stay within a 5K radius, don't go out as, unless you absolutely need to. So we're practically told, you know, be standing still in our individual lives as well. Um, but you know, it's not all gloom and doom, even though it might feel like, you know, we, some people I've noticed a lot of my clients and my family and my friends, when I ask them, you know, how are you feeling? They do feel like that, you know, freedoms are taken away from them. They feel limited that they, even some people are like, oh, I want to work out. I want to be fit, but I just don't feel like I can do much. And even, you know, like people who had a very, uh, a, like a really good fitness program or fitness routine prior to lockdown, a lot of people have lost that in lockdown now because, you know, gyms are closed now. So people who, you know, used to go to gym, they've lost access to the equipment that they used to go to gym or they've lost, you know, their trainers. Or if you did a class, you've lost all the group of people that you used to work out with. And this is essentially like losing your support system when it comes to fitness. So, you know, when you've lost the trainer or the gym or the people that you work out with, a lot of my, you know, clients and friends have been telling me that I've lost my motivation because, you know, essentially they've lost their support system. But like I said, it's not all gloom and doom. And there's actually so much that we can do during lockdown to keep us fit, healthy and active. But before I go into all that and explain, okay, what are things that we can do? How can we stay healthy and active? Let's look into the reasons of why we actually should. Why is now more important than ever in this time when there's a pandemic out there? Why is it so much more important now for us to look at being physically active, being fit, being healthy, looking at what we're eating, making sure we're getting sunlight? So you can counteract the effects of, um, you know, lockdown and you can actually have a very thriving fitness regime and a fitness routine in lockdown. And we're going to go and look into that. But if basically the to look really into why fitness is so important in this pandemic, that is probably your biggest motivation to actually get out and start being physically fit and being, you know, healthy and enjoying the sun. So exercise, firstly, it's shown to build immunity. So 
in a time like this where there is a pandemic out there, it's you want to have a good, strong immune system on your side. And exercise actually helps build immunity. And when you have a strong immune system, you're less likely to get uh, sick. So it's, it's going to work in your favor to be physically active and to eat well. Secondly, exercise is your gateway to healthy eating. And I've seen that with a lot of people that if you're not working out, you find yourself sluggish, you're usually watching TV and, you know, you're just pecking on snacks the whole time. But if you have, you know, you wake up and you do a really good, you know, just a really good workout, you're going to find yourself eating healthy for the rest of the day as well. So it's like your pathway to when you work out, it kind of leads to more positive things in your life. There was a research and I got this written down here, a research from the University of Virginia um, this was in 2020, so last year, and it basically proved that regular uh, physical activity significantly reduces the risk of acute respiratory distress syndrome, which is the main cause of death in COVID. So basically that means even if you were to catch COVID, people who do exercise regularly have a, more, a higher chance of surviving it. So these are like, in a nutshell, why it's really important to work out and be fit and be physically active during lockdown. So that, I guess that the next question would be, well, how? How can I do it when I've got a 5K radius, gyms are closed, I don't have access to my trainer. Um, you know, how, what can we do to still stay fit, healthy and active? And basically, like, if you had a fitness routine prior to lockdown, you might have to change the way that you see fitness now. So, you know, prior to lockdown, maybe you went to a gym and you've got to kind of, and maybe you used, you know, all the big bulky weight equipment. So you've got to think, okay, what can I do now if I don't have access to that and look at what is it that you do have access to now. Another thing I've noticed is a lot of people, as I had discussed before, that with, you know, with lockdown, you lose your support system, you lose all your gym buddies and all your friends that you work out with. And then essentially a lot of people end up losing motivation. And then with that whole 5k restriction as well, it's like, oh, well, I don't have motivation to exercise. And so many of my clients and so many of my friends have said this. And this is something I've said time and time again, but don't rely on motivation when it comes to your fitness because what is motivation motivation is just it's just an emotion and same as willpower I know like in the fitness industry they really pump you up with have willpower have motivation but it's nothing but an emotion and like all emotions it just goes up and down it fleets some days you have it some days you don't so if you're going to rely on something as fleeting as an emotion it's not actually going to create a consistency or that kind of routine that you want to achieve so the the key is discipline you really want to try to get some discipline in your day and try to get some discipline in your routine and discipline is basically when you repeat a behavior over and over and over again and especially when it comes to fitness you've got to repeat that whatever it's a workout or the time that you work out you've got to repeat it over and over again that it becomes so ingrained and embedded into your routine that it's actually it's difficult to stray away from it so when you're doing something and every day you've got like a time set that in the morning I'm going to wake up and I'm going to go for my jog. And if you're doing that day in and day out, eventually, you know, you're going to find it hard to sleep in. I can't sleep in anymore because I just know that I have to go out. i got to go do my bike ride. So that's what you want to aim for is just constantly keep repeating that behavior. Even if you don't feel like it, just do it because eventually that's going to end up becoming a habit. And that's what's going to create that routine. I know that for some people it might feel like, well, you know, if I don't have motivation, how am I going to, you know, force myself to like keep doing that behavior? So one of the, like what we'd have to look down now is, okay, well, how can you create, what can you use to make you, or what can you rely on to kind of get you to create these behaviors into habits? How can you create that habit when you don't have that motivation to get up and go out? So let's look into some of these things now. My first number one thing that I always tell everyone is set a time for yourself, a time in your day. Like most of us are not, you know, working outside of our homes. We're working in our homes. And even if you are working outside of your homes, just think, set aside half an hour or an hour that's just for you. So like I've told my whole family, everyone knows that in the morning, so two weeks ago, it used to be at 4 p.m. I had told everyone, I think of all things I need to do during the day, for instance, like I've got to school my kids now because it's, you know, they're in lockdown, like doing remote learning. I've got to cook dinner, I've got to clean the house, I've got certain chores I need to do, I've got to spend time with my husband as well. Like there's all these different things. And I've got to think, okay, where can I fit one hour, which is just for me? And this one hour, this is all part of self-care. Like you should never think of your fitness as, you know, oh, I need to lose weight. So this is like a punishment. It's not that. Fitness, 
it releases endorphins, which is, you know, the happy hormones. It's going to make you feel so good afterwards. So think of it as self-care, that this is an hour that you're spending for yourself, for your self-care, for your health, for something that's going to benefit you. So set aside one hour every single day and set that time and tell everyone around you, whoever lives with you, that this is the hour that I have to myself. And make sure it's an hour that you know you're not going to get interrupted too much. So for me, I wake up after Fajr. That one hour or two hours sometimes after Fajr is my time. So before the kids wake up, before I know that I have to you know, deal with anyone and help anyone, that's my time. So that's the time where every morning I think, okay, 5 a.m., pray, and then get ready, get on my bike, and I'll go cycling around. And I've created that habit. It's a habit. I never used to do this prior to lockdown. And now I, if there's a day where I sleep in or I you know, don't end up doing my cycling, it's just it makes me so upset because it's, I've, be, I've turned this, this idea into behaviors that have become habits now. And when you create that habit, it becomes really hard to stray away from it. You just like, if I miss my day of cycling, I'm in a bad mood all day. So when you get to that point in your fitness where you think, okay, every day, and it doesn't have to be like, you know, I'm going to, you don't have to wake up and run 5K every day. Not everyone can do that. So you've got to start off doing baby steps. That was the second point that I wanted to get to. So number one, set a time for yourself. And this is your, it's your me time. It's your self-care time. And then secondly, think of, plan out what is it that you're going to do. If you just tell yourself, oh, yeah, I'll exercise today, but you haven't planned anything out, most likely, you know, it's not going to happen. So set that time that, okay, this is what I'm, uh, this is the time that I'm going to do it. And today I'm going to ride my bike or today I'm going to go for, and whether it's a 5K walk or it could be I'm going to go onto YouTube. That's another thing. YouTube is like this amazing place of so many fitness videos and you've got to know where you are in your fitness journey if you're a beginner just go into youtube and type in you know beginner level low impact workout and pick what kind of workout you want to do do you want to do yoga and pilates do you want to do a hit workout exercise is not a punishment it is a celebration of what your body can do that is a beautiful um comment it is definitely a celebration of what your body can do and when you start doing this regularly it becomes your that highlight of your day like you know, for me now, cycling has become the highlight of my day. Prior to that, it could have been like a boxing session or, yeah, so decide what it is. What is it that you actually enjoy? If you don't like running, don't force yourself to go outside and run 5K. If anything, you're just going to hurt your knees and you'll come back just feeling sore and annoyed. Do something that you enjoy. If you enjoy punching things, buy a punching bag. If you enjoy, I don't like whatever it is, you know, yoga, Pilates, you know, go in a nice place outside in the sun and do yoga Pilates. And if you don't know how to do it, get a video off YouTube and do that. You know, another big thing that I would recommend is go out and chase the sunrise or the sunset because there's it's so healing and it's so invigorating at the same time when you get a sunrise or a sunset. So whether it's, you know, waking up early and doing just going for a nice light walk. So if you can't run, go for a nice light walk. Even just take your coffee out and sit and watch the sun come out. It is so healing and so, like I said, so invigorating. Um, how do you create good habits to stay healthy? Okay, so that's another question. So how do you, what are the habits that you need? Firstly, especially in lockdown, prior to lockdown, I would have said work out, you know, three to four days a week. But now that we're in lockdown, I really think every single day, put aside that half an hour or an hour where you're doing some form of physical activity. It doesn't mean you need to go for a run every day, any form of physical activity. So it can be yoga, it can be Pilates, it can be running up and down the stairs if that brings you joy. Or, you know, take a soccer ball, go in the backyard with your kids and play soccer with them. Do something that is preferably outdoors because we need vitamin D more than ever now. We really do need to get that since we're stuck inside our houses all the time. So, you know, go outdoors, play a game of soccer with your kids, you know, chase them around, do anything that keeps your body moving, keeps your blood pumping, gets those muscles moving so you're not sitting down in front of a screen all day long. Does anyone have any other questions? I think I just rambled on for so long. <laughs> we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll give it time to settle down, we uh, take the questions yeah. they come. So let's let's bring you Sister Jahida on board. So Sister Jahida is yeah. the owner of Metamorphosis Coaching. So, Sazaja, yes. uh, let me ask you the, the, uh, a question that's come up. Um, how is it best to cope with anxiety and, 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 and burnout during this time? Of course. So, this is a very common question that I receive all the time. Um, and there's all different types of things that can trigger your anxiety. So, it could be anxiety of uh, the fear of the unknown. 
you know, am I going to catch coronavirus? Um, is the vaccine going to affect me? Uh, what's going to happen to a family member or the elderly if they get sick? And then there is also anxiety of overwhelm. So feeling like you're not on top of things in the household um, and maybe the anxiety of gaining weight and not being physically fit. And Sister Reem has, has added so many great tips and strategies that everybody can learn from and follow. So the first thing to do, and I'm very big on this, is having structure and routine. So if you're suffering from anxiety of overwhelm, structure and routine is going to help this for you. And another thing is everybody needs to be very mindful of the fact that during lockdown, we need to be a lot a lot easier on ourselves. So we're going to need to actually lower our expectations. Everything is quite difficult at the moment. Every day is unpredictable. And it's actually a global pandemic. It's something that we're not used to. No matter how long we could be in lockdown, it's just going to continue to impact us. And there is something that is actually called pandemic fatigue. Now, this is not a clinical diagnosis, but having pandemic fatigue can also affect your anxiety levels. And pandemic fatigue refers to feeling constantly tired, having a lack of motivation, um, you know, not having the energy to get up and work. I'm a school teacher, so even coming online can sometimes be a little bit of a drag and I need to remind myself the importance of what I do, the purpose, and also get up, be motivated, ready to teach these kids. As it's not very easy for us to teach behind the screen and it's a challenge for everybody involved, even the students. So to reduce this pandemic fatigue, it's important to set ourselves small goals, small attainable goals throughout this lockdown and to make sure that we have time for self-care. So as Sister Ree mentioned, it requires a lot of teamwork. So, you know, if there is the assistance of the father of the children at home and you are married, it's teamwork. You know, we need to make time for each other and boundaries are actually quite crucial. So as parents, we do need to set boundaries with our children and we also need to set boundaries between our children. Everybody does need their personal space and there could be a lot of sibling rivalries at the moment that is happening because children are getting up in each other's space and so it becomes a very challenging time. Now, if it is anxiety where it's the fear of the unknown, the best thing we can do, and I'm sure uh, Brother Munir will probably cover this soon or maybe Brother Ismail, is uh, focus on your connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, tawakkul is a priority and it is very important to have tawakkul during this time. Um, and the best thing that we can do is when we do notice that we're having a negative thought, we need to stop that negative thought. We can either distract ourselves and do something that is quite fulfilling, something that will fill your cup. Or you can write down these negative thoughts and think about ways that you can overcome from having this repeated pattern of worrying about the fear of the unknown because in the end it's not in our control i think you're on oh mute <laughs> you're on mute yeah. <laughs> yes that's the saying of 2020 and 2021 right i think so, we that's what we hear the most you're on mute you're on, you're mute. on mute yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, two, so two questions um how do you check in with your children and mm. there's a thing what they call what they refer to as um cabin fever Mm. And, and, and what is the importance of reducing cabin fever? Um, okay. And then a third question is how to connect with your loved ones. So if you can touch on those three things yeah. for us. Yeah, this is very important. And I actually talk about this quite a lot throughout the lockdown. Um, there are some signs that we need to look out for, especially in particular with our teens. So if you do have any teenage children, uh, I currently work with a lot of parents and their teenage kids. And one of the issues that a lot of parents are facing is their children are showing a lack of motivation to leave their bedrooms. They don't even show up for classes online. They're not interested in completing their assignments. Um, some, some kids come, they join for dinner, and then it's straight back to their room. So the best thing that I, that I could advise anyone to do is to work on your connection with your children. So during this time, and it's a very special time for many, if we look at it from the silver lining perspective that we're at home, our children are there, if you have that structure and that routine in place where you are just taking out even half an hour of your day for quality time with your children, it can do so much for your relationship. It could do so much for their mental health and your own mental health. So notice the signs. If your children are starting to withdraw, if they're not showing any motivation to do anything, if they're constantly cooped up in their home, uh, in their room, this is very, very um, important for you to, con to speak to them and find out if they are actually okay. And 
come from a compassionate perspective, an empathetic perspective. You know, don't come down on them hard. Why aren't you attending online classes? You're going to fail your assignments. This is not good. This is the last thing that a child or a teenager wants to hear. At this point in time, the most important thing is that everybody is staying afloat, that everybody is forming these positive connections with those in the household, and that we are there to validate each other's opinions and each other's feelings. This is very, very important. And as a parent, the best thing you can do is through communicating with your child, find out what their likes are. So if they enjoy playing certain board games, try and get them outside of the house. You know, most of the time, and this is very common with teenagers, they don't want to leave their, their games. A lot of people now are addicted to Call of Duty. It's a very popular game that teenagers and even parents are playing during this time. And so having this connection to your screen is quite detrimental. We need to have this break. And even if your child is resisting and they don't want to get out of their room, it's very important that you set rules and boundaries because in the end, their prefrontal cortex, which is the part of their brain, is not fully developed until the age of 25. And this is the logical part of the brain. And for adults who are listening in, if you are experiencing pandemic fatigue, it's completely normal because the prefrontal cortex, that part of your brain is absolutely exhausted. And this is the part of your brain that is in charge of goal setting, in charge of motivation, and in, in charge of basically making logical decisions. And at this point in time, it is definitely very exhausted. I think I addressed your question. Was there anything else I missed? No, Jazakallah, that's, that's some really good advice there. Um, um, uh, Brother Munir, do you have any uh, comments on uh, Sister Jahida's uh, information? And we have a guest. Um, we have a guest yeah. um, um, to coming on tonight. Just going to share with us as well some advice. Sister Nisa Khan is coming on as a guest. Zakalakh, Sister Nisa, for joining us. Sorry, Munir, go ahead, bro. Yeah, um Khair, Sister Jahida. She mentioned uh, a lot of um, tips. Mashallah. Um, one of the things she said, um, and I would like to highlight this as well, is, uh, you know, as Muslims, uh, subhanAllah, if we are to follow Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we will be very busy in, in our you know, 24 hours um, time that we have. In fact, um, you know, if you are to read the story of Rasul Sallallahu the seerah of Rasul Sallallahu you would find, you know, how busy he was, how 24 hours was not enough for a Muslim. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, you know, um, uh, Subhanallah. You had a perfect example in Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now he used to, 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 to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. He used to ask forgiveness for the ummah. He used to ask for success. He used to ask Jannah and Nar and, and, and many other du'as. You know, and he used to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a lot. Subhanallah. In fact, if we are to, again, to, to read his story, Rasulullah sallam, um, you know, if starting from Fajr, he used to go to the masjid. Yes, now we can't go to the masjid because of the lockdown. We have to pray at home. But let's create a you know mini masjid in our house. Mm -hmm. You know, subhanAllah, I hear uh, many uh, families that they don't even pray. Everyone just pray in their room. Yeah. SubhanAllah, this is this shouldn't be uh, the case. We should pray together as jama'ah. Mm -hmm. This is the first thing we have to uh, to do so that we are you know together in this. Reminder, like, you know, uh, you have after Fajr a short reminder, read a uh, Quran together, you know, uh, subhanAllah, read a hadith from the seerah of Rasulullah Like, there is a lot of things to read, you know, add to that, inshallah, you know, the the, the um, tips that Sister Reem gave, you know, sporting, like, alhamdulillah, we are very lucky in Australia, at least we have two, three hours that we can go out and um you know, um, um, and uh, we can move around and, and do some exercise. Alhamdulillah, if you are able to do it, uh, that's that's perfect. Subhanallah. And then Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, after Fajr, he has uh, shuruq. You know, he used to pray shuruq. So he was looking after, you know, he was looking for every opportunity to praise Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, to connect with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And then he comes, here comes the duha. You know, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha says, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم uh, you know, he used to pray, Rasul Sallallahu he used to pray uh, al-duha, you know, the morning after after shuruq prayer. 
just before Dhuhr, Arba Rakat. Sometimes he used to pray uh, eight Rakat, eight prayers, subhanAllah. So he was busy. And as we know, the, the Salah of Rasulullah, he wasn't uh, reciting Qul Allahu Ahad or, you know, Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbin Nas. No, his Salah used to be very long because he used to uh, read long ayats in the Quran. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he used to contemplate and ponder in, in, his, in his salah. And then you have, a year ago, uh, Salat al-Dhuhr. Kana Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa min qaylulati waqti Salat al-Dhuhr. So before Salat al-Dhuhr, he used to sleep a little bit because imagine waking up the entire night praising, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praying night prayer. And then he used to take this qaylula, rest, at least you know, 15 to 20 minutes, subhanAllah, so that the body is ready to, uh, to the next break. SubhanAllah, another thing, um, and then go, go, go on, you know, all the different um, prayers like you have in, in place. So you, uh, also, you know, my sisters mentioned you have to be structured um, during your day. SubhanAllah, if you had to look at our deen, how beautiful is it? It's already structured. You know, from Fajr, and then you have Dhuhr, and then you have Asr, and then Maghrib, and then Isha. Subhanallah, it's already been scheduled. You All you need to do is just, you know, put something, activities, make yourself busy, something that's beneficial, inshallah. In between uh, these, subhanallah, uh, uh, revelationally, uh, you know, schedule that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put for ourselves. Subhanallah. You know, eat together with your family. Wallahi, this is from the Sunnah. Eat together with your wife, with your kids. You know, I, I hate when I see people, subhanAllah, they take their plate and go to their room or eat while they're playing, subhanAllah. Okay. This is the ni'mah that we have in this country, subhanAllah. I remember a few organizations, uh, um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and accept from them, collecting some donations for people in refugee camps because they don't have that meal and they can't afford to be in lockdown because... Subhanallah, they don't have it, so they need to. Uh, someone has to provide for them. Otherwise, they have sick people, they have uh, elderly, they have. They're, they're very fragile. They will die. Like the entire refugee camp will be gone in one day. Subhanallah. So we have to always remember that uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala actually uh, chosen uh, Allahu Alam, but this land, Australia, for us to be in lockdown and and we can call. Um, organizations like National Zakat Foundation or even call the uh, government support line to receive uh, food, you know, food boxes in our door, door in our door, door steps, subhanAllah. How is that amazing? So, um, also, you know, for the brothers, wallahi, يعني, uh, you know, following the sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is just amazing. You know, how Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, يعني, anha used to say, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, as I said, he was the example. And when we say he was the example, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, you know, he was the example in everything. He was a perfect example. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brothers, um, he used to be fi khidmati ahlihi. Subhanallah. He wasn't just sitting down, you know, um, uh, expecting that the food to be made by itself or, you know, may Allah bless the sisters to, to make the food and he just sitting there and, um, you know, waiting for, for all the, the, the services to be arrived uh, on his desk. This is not right. In fact, you know, from the Sunnah of Rasulullah and, you know, going out there, you serve the, 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 you know, your family, your wife, your daughters, your, your um, kids, subhanAllah. You get rewarded for this. Another thing, you know, when we're doing this, بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى, put intention. Rasulullah صلى الله said, إنما الأعمال بالنيات. إنما الأعمال بالنيات. Actions are but intentions, subhanAllah. So even, subhanAllah, Rasulullah صلى الله said, you know, the, 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 the food or the, uh, the morsel that you put in your wife's uh, uh, mouth, if you have the good intention, wallahi, you're rewarded for it. You get rewarded for it. How amazing is that? So there is a lot of opportunity, uh, you know, in lockdown, actually, to get to know your family, to to reap all the fruits, you know, the the the, the uh, rewards that Rasulullah used to 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 to, to um, bring and 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 uh, his family close and get rewarded for it. Subhanallah. Rasulullah used to uh, awaken his family during night time to he prays and he get them to pray and uh, and then and then uh, Subhanallah go back to 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 the masjid. Um, one thing also, 
you know, we have to take opportunity during this uh, lockdown is also have the intention of itikaf. Imagine, you know, many brothers, they love to go and, and sit in the masjid in the last 10 days of Ramadan. In fact, sometimes you try to book, but there is no enough space. SubhanAllah, put intention, you are doing itikaf in this lockdown. You know, memorize Quran, do you adhkar, uh, read the books that you never read, subhanAllah, you know, get them out of the shelf and start benefiting yourself and your family as well, inshallah. So there is a lot uh, to be discussed, wallahi, yani, to, to, you know, there's a lot of opportunity that, um, you know, since the time is in your hand, that you can, inshallah, uh, you know, reap a lot of um, uh, 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 knowledge, inshallah, while you're just sitting at home and uh, helping your family. I was just watching a show the, the other night on SBS where they were interviewing a lot of people and they were talking about during the lockdown about mindfulness. So mindfulness is a very popular, it's, the, it's, a, it's an in thing these days. And I was just contemplating one of the sisters made a comment there on Facebook that uh, uh, and the people were explaining how, how beautiful they find mindfulness, but we already have it in our religion where we at least five times a day uh, yeah. um, where we can get uh, our mindfulness uh, when we make our salah. And also uh, one point to add there is uh, in relation to the salah, um, in our busy days when we used to go to work, we often don't get the chance to make the sunnah ratiba, the 12 sunnah ratiba in the day. So now when you're home, to make that extra time to, to try and fulfill the 12 um, sunnah ratiba of salah. And the reward is... Um, You'll be in lockdown in Jannah in the palace. For every day you make, for every day you make the twelve, the twelve rakat, you you another palace for you where you can stay in. You'd be Amen. love to be in lockdown. Amen. We have a, a guest speaker tonight, Jazakallah Khair Sister Nisa, for coming on short notice, uh, and share with us some of your tips for us to keep ourselves uh, uh, ha happy and motivated during the lockdown. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Um, yes, it was very last minute. Um, just a bit of, tip of tip, tips and advice that uh, I think sometimes people out there, when they see people like all of you and myself or people proactively working in the community, they feel like maybe we don't uh, experience, you know, uh, uncertainty or anxiety or the mental you know, um, aspects that, you know, they're experiencing, just for peace of mind or peace of comfort so you guys know. I actually am anxious and I am, you know, the uncertainty for certain things does get to me because my husband's not here, he's overseas, and I sort of think what if something happens here, he can't come back, and what if something happens over there, I can't travel there. And so they, they are things that we need to understand that are out of our control and what's not in our control, we need to learn to just let go of it. I know it's easier said than done, but we really need to learn to let go of it. And what's in our control, we need to actually take charge of it. And just some of the things my family and I that have been doing is that we've been limiting the news and media. Uh, it can be really, really toxic when it's playing in front of you, you know, you know, 24-7 on social media. So you can control what's going to pop up on your screens, limit it. It's um, really, really, really healthy. It's made a huge difference for us. Connecting and check with um, other people, whether it's family, whether it's friends, people overseas that you've never connected with before. And to make it as real as possible, do video calls. Like I know it can be really challenging. Like we do it with, you know, our parents and our siblings. And it's really funny because my dad's not great with, you know, um, video calls. So he gets really excited that he sees all of us, but we can only see his eyes because he doesn't understand like the concept of, you know, the phone. But nonetheless, you know, connect with each other, whether it's, you know, um, you know, weekly. Uh, us cousins, we've got like a like a Kahoot. Um, it's like, you know, an online software where we have a gaming night and we're all like on together just, just to make it as real as possible. It takes a little bit of effort, but it's a great way of connecting. Another really important point is to write down five gratitudes every single day. And it's important that you write it down because by writing it, it actually manifests in your life. It does. Um, makes you have a healthier sleep. And a really beautiful friend of mine who's actually online tonight from Lifestyle, uh, Lifestyle Psychology who works on mental health, um, Zeb had given me that advice many years ago uh, in relations to my son, and I've actually been implementing that during this lockdown, and it's just it's been amazing. As Sister Reem said, get physical. It's really, really, really important that you all do that. Um, 
I still train online with my trainer three days a week. On the other days, even if it means to take out a you know skipping rope and jump to do 100 jumps, it releases those happy endorphins. It does. Go outside, go into your garden, do some you know gardening. There's plenty of things even on YouTube that you know you guys can watch. Do something new. Um, if you can do something new, there's a lot of DIY videos online. I decided to watch how to cut men's hair and did my boy's hair. Um, didn't turn out the best, but you know what? We had a great laugh. It was a learning experience, and they've got that peace of mind that there's still a month and a half, you know, for them to grow their hair back. Um, try not to implement your old routine into your new routine because it's impossible. And this is what's causing a lot of stress on, on mothers, especially with the whole homeschooling routine. You need to adjust new habits, new routines in the new environment and situation that we're in because, it, you know, just our old ways, like trying to stick to it, it's impossible. Let go of the things that people aren't coming into our homes and we're not going anywhere. It's okay if you haven't made the bed for a few days. It's okay if your washing is sitting there. This is a time to have quality time with your children. And I can't stress on the time aspect. Like my kids and I will sit together every night. We have a set time where we play cards together. Or, and it's not about spending money on material, like all these mums are going online and thinking they've got to buy all these things with their kids. No, it's really the simple things that you do with them. And I'm pretty sure if anybody's from my era, when growing up, we'd sit in a line and tickle each other on the back and we had to figure out what the other person was doing. Like, <laughs> you know, simple little games like that, um, that are sensory to play these things with your children. And as Brother Munir was saying, like something as simple as increasing barakah in your home, um, you know, having a meal. You know, so many of the teenagers take their plates up into their rooms, but actually having a meal together is one of the ways of increasing baraka in your home. And I personally believe that if we could focus on just all of the things that bring baraka into our life, lockdown is the way to do it. It truly, truly is. And that's another whole separate session altogether. But, And the biggest thing that I can tell you is to spend time with yourself. In the hustle and bustle of life, we don't spend time with ourselves. We don't get to know ourselves. And it's a time to feed your soul. And as Brother Munir was saying that, you know, um, mindfulness is something stated in Islam. And the fact that we're in lockdown, you know, to reach that state of mindfulness or muraqaba is through solitude and silence. And we have that opportunity once the kids are in bed, especially the ones with little kids, um, spend that time, you know, to get to know yourself, do your prayers, your adhkar and your Quran. Please don't let go of it. Um, and work on something that you can, you know, in a situation when I was talking about gratitude, I remember I sent, you know, I put up a post and Sister Jahida might know she commented on it. And being, you know, a teacher and working, you know, with families, there are so many families in Southwest this uh, southwestern Sydney that are actually missing out on vital um, opportunity you know to educate their children you know there's a single mother with nine children that um, the kids are all missing out on schooling because they don't have devices and so our center grow with me in conjunction with you know um, national zakat fund inshallah next week we'll be having 50 new devices coming in um, to support all these families um, it just gives you that sense of that you know networking with other organizations and you know other whether it's Muslims non-muslims and yeah having the chance you know to get out there and in whatever way we can to help as brother Muni was saying the 40 neighbors right around us it's pretty much as a community we really really need to stay connected so they're my tips of advice of what i've been doing you know doing during the lockdown jazakallah for that beautiful and great advice uh, sister Nisa. and jazakallah for taking the time at such short notice for making the time can i ask a question of of everybody there you know, um, forget the COVID, just before COVID, like when, when you were home for the day and, 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 uh, or, or wherever you were stuck and there was nothing really to do or you were forced to, to wait for a while, did it seem like time took a long time? It like, just seemed like you know, it's just forever. You're sitting there at home waiting to do something, maybe three, four hours, and it just seems like a long time. Did you ever feel like that? And compare that to now in lockdown, we 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 in, in in this isolated space on the home for such a long time. Do you feel that time is going quick? Yes. Or time is long. Right? I feel time's going very quick. Definitely yeah. very quick. I agree. I just feel like it's going quick, and we're still yeah. sort of hustling and bustling. It's it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, but it's amazing that um, uh, we have uh, our, our weekly meetings, and and then every Monday we have the meeting, and then. Then before I realize it, it's Monday again, and I'm thinking, where did that week just go? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so based on that, uh, uh, I think yeah, Allah is giving us an opportunity 
to go back and reflect on things because the hadith from the Prophet sallallahu I'll just read it. Anas ibn Malik reported, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the hour will not be established until time passes rapidly such that a year is like a month, a month is like a week, a week is like a day, a day is like an hour, an hour is like the flick of a flame. So if you think about it, that's, that's um, you know, we're almost in that time where the time, a whole day feels like an hour. And it's not like we feel like we can't get much done because we're that busy. It's not that, it's just that um, the times are just going so quickly. So if we're saying that the hour will not be established, which means I feel like we're in the last part, right? So yeah, Allah has given us that that, that beautiful blessing yeah. opportunity in, in this time to to, to, to reflect, learn, our, learn about our religion, learn about our families, get to know the kids, establish a relationship with each other. So there's a lot, a lot of benefit in this, except besides worrying about when are we going to go out sometime again to go and eat out or, or, or have a haircut. <laughs> I'm sure the first thing was even this is have a haircut. <laughs> so uh, alhamdulillah. So uh, Farouk, do we have any questions from, from the, uh, the audience? I actually have something to add to that, um, Brother yeah. Ismail. Um, while we are mentioning that this is such an amazing time for many to feel connected, I just want to speak from experience. There are some mothers out there who may be feeling extremely guilty that they are not having this time for connection, mm -hmm. proper connection with Ozpan al -Dayla. And this is because more than ever, we are feeling so overwhelmed with a list of to-do things especially for, and it's not just the working mums, but I think the working mums and the ones that are trying to manage schoolwork for the kids, trying to manage the cooking, the cleaning, and if they're married, attending to their husband, attending to work. This for me at the moment is the most overwhelming time of my life. I'm managing two jobs, plus my children, plus everything else. And there are moments where I do feel like I'm drowning. So if anyone reaches that point, you need to remind yourself that it's okay if you're not performing at your best in everything and that it's okay mm -hmm. if your connection, your spiritual connection with Allah isn't at its most uh, amazing at this point because right now for a lot of people, it's just about getting through the day, taking every single day as it comes. And it's, it's sometimes sitting back and thinking, what are some things that I can actually remove off my to-do list so that I am having time for myself, so that I am having time for connection with my family, as it is the best time for connection for everyone. So just yeah. for those out there who are feeling overwhelmed, you're not alone. I'm in there with you as well. To so add to that, Brother Smail, yeah, I think, really um, good very good point. Um, yeah, to add to that, um, I was saying, maybe I forgot. Um, I think um, people, they just need to, to um, you know, being organized one thing, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as Sister Rim said, get off um, social media. Um, you know, mm -hmm. many people, they think when I tell them I don't have a TV at home mm -hmm. and my kids are normal, no, like they you. just love it. Like, you know, yeah. even when we go to uh, my my family house, like, you know, the TVs are there, but they, don't, they just look for books, for example, mm -hmm. alhamdulillah. Um, so I think there is an addiction of, you know, screen that's also causing yeah. a lot of, uh, yeah. you know, anxiety and, and, and people think like, you know, the world is going crazy and they get worried, subhanAllah. As Sister Anissa mentioned, um, you know, just focus on yourself and, and uh, on your family, on your children, you know, plan for yourself. Don't worry. Everyone is doing something about it. So don't watch, sit there and watch what others mm -hmm. are doing and doing nothing because you will feel like, yeah. well, I'm not doing anything. Everyone is doing something. So I feel like, um, you know, many people are in this category, unfortunately. So yeah. subhanAllah, you know, get out of the screen, um, do your own thing. That's that's my my other advice, inshallah. Yeah. I'll tell you a funny story. My daughter, uh, uh, my youngest daughter, when they, when they got married and they moved into their place, they planned not to have a TV and then the guy came and delivered the couch and the sofa and they came in and he, and he said where do you want to put the sofa and you know like in the lounge area because there's no TV they didn't know where to put the sofa so he goes where do you want to put the sofa she said just put it down and he goes where's your TV she goes I don't have one so he said the look he gave her was like it was almost <laughs> like a sin not to have a TV so they didn't like they, where they do you this, look when yeah, you're sitting on no, the sofa no, they had the dilemma to other. where to place the sofa <laughs> Because it, there was no TV to direct it towards. To direct it towards. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and, and even that, before we take another question, and then I see in the comments that the sisters are talking about, you know, finding hobbies and stuff like this. 
So my dearest beloved wife, she she decided to do crocheting, and uh, and taught herself, and I find it amazing, taught herself to do crocheting using YouTube, um, and hopefully she's going to learn how to YouTube um, to do haircuts <laughs> if we don't get out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, she's done so many things, and my daughter, they take, they decided to have a competition. So my daughter does all these little animals, and oh, Sister nice. Sarika is doing all of these. Um, she's doing, um, what do you call the hair scrunchies, and she's doing headbands. And I got one of these, like, oh, nice. did, like just like, <laughs> to, because I, I'm not going to get anything. So I got this yesterday, and she did this like in, 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 in probably half a day, alhamdulillah. So oh, wow. I think the sisters, um, even her Quran teacher, her Quran students, um, some of her Quran students uh, wants to learn now. So she's got a class on uh, um, on not only Quran but um, on how to crochet. So so she can have a whole following on that. So it's yeah. it's given us so many opportunities to learn different things. Um, there was somebody that had yeah. mentioned there was a question about uh, not going out in the backyard or feeling claustrophobic. So did we address that question? Mm -hmm. No, we didn't. Um, I think she was saying that um, you have to wear a face mask even when you're outdoors. And I think it depends what area you're in. In my area, we don't have to. Um, but I guess we just need to look into that law. Do you actually have to wear a face mask if you're going out for a walk? And I guess my solution to that would be maybe go for it. I'm a big fan of sunrises. Go out at sunrise when there's nobody around you. So you're not, you know, risking anyone and go for a walk at sunrise. And it's, it's just there's just so much baraka in that time and it's so scenic and beautiful and it really sets you up for the rest of the day and like i said it doesn't have to be a full-on jog or run just getting out moving your body getting your blood pumping and beginning your day with that sunrise it's going to do you so much benefit for the rest of the day it really it feels like just like a cleanse it cleanses you yeah. inside out yeah and it releases positive hormones the sun is the best thing yeah, it makes me feel so good, Panel. The sunrise. I'm just addicted to it. something I picked up in lockdown. I just got addicted to the sunrise and just making yeah, sure I get out first thing in the morning. The <laughs> They're very inspiring. Sorry? Your bike rides are very inspiring. <laughs> um, yeah, that's the thing. Like, I was going to mention, you know how you mentioned our brother Ismail to pick up a hobby in lockdown? So for me, it's road cycling became my hobby. And Brother Muni, as you were saying, it's, you know, we're seeing so much chaos and destruction and confusion on social media. And on the news, every time you switch on the TV or you open up your phone and you go into social media, it's just one thing after another. One minute you see COVID, so you swipe up, and then you see Afghanistan, and you swipe up, and you see Palestine, and you swipe up. And there's all these things that are, you know, just really depressing, and then you feel like, oh, well, I can't do anything. But we do have to understand a lot of this stuff is actually out of our control. Like, none of us can really solve the crisis in Afghanistan or fix the COVID problem here. So... It's okay to know it, but if you do find that it is creating a lot of anxiety, switch it off. Right. Switch it off mm -hmm. and then pick up a hobby that's going to keep you, you know, something that's going to give you a bit of life and keep you happy and something you enjoy. If you don't enjoy going for a run, pick up something that you do enjoy, something that you – that's and right. set little goals, like you want to keep improving on them because setting those little goals and you track your progress and it's just exciting. Yeah, amazing. I need a skipping uh, Rebecca. Uh, at the NZF, um, just as part of the well-being as everyone's working from home in most of the um, big cities, um, we actually um, asking our, our um, you know, staff members to actually start doing some ibadat uh, during the waking hours. Like, for example, um, you know, the adhkar al-sabah and masa and doing the morning and, and, and evening supplications just to add to their schedule, basically. Um, one of the activities that we're doing is also adding sister Rim into making everyone um, exercise uh, in a competition uh, <laughs> alhamdulillah um, so you know subhanallah sometimes uh, you know if if you have a business and there are people working for you please you know help them because not everyone is um, you know encouraged to do motivated so when you make it part of their daily life mm -hmm. including to your family by the way Mm -hmm. You know, make sure like you know, everyone wakes up in the morning and you're going to have breakfast together. It's like it's put in schedule. We're going to do it together. There's, there's no um, skipping from this. You know, you know? Sorry, another thing about how you said to eat the meals together. We've done this new thing in lockdown where we actually cook the meals together as a family. And yeah. that's something very new for us because my husband doesn't really spend that much time cooking. You know, every morning he's the one making breakfast and I've got my kids helping me cooking lunch and 
what another child will help me do the dinner and then my little seven year old will make dessert all by himself and it's they're all like I have all boys and they're doing so well cooking now <laughs> but that's another thing that it actually makes it and I notice that the kids will enjoy the food so much more when they cook it so even if it's Brussels sprouts and spinach they will enjoy it when they've helped cook it so it's another thing you can pick up is cook with the family and then eat together as a family. It's part of that experience. It's part of when you're having an experience together. And another thing I request um, you know, parents to do is that we've got the time with our children at home. Even if it means a half an hour with every child one-on-one, -on -one, it's really, really, really important we communicate with them. Uh, the lack of communication that I see in our families and in our community, our children as a teacher, I can tell you, they lack a lot of creativity some children and that creativity and confidence that we you know want in our children stems from um, character and that character comes from when you have great communication and so communication when you've got good communication it's intertwined with our relationship so when you have a stronger relationship it's a higher level of communication and when we have that um, we have good relationships and then that that leads to happiness so communication relationships happiness then the character confidence and creativity that's where it kicks into our children you know otherwise it's always like no it's you know like do this this way do this that way you know have everybody's input ask about their suggestions ask about you know their emotions or whatever it is um, so it's really really important I'm finding that the communication like just with my kids whether it's on the topics whatever that relates to them their uni you know their future marriage it's um, we never in, in the hustle and bustle have the time to really have the in-depth, meaningful conversation. So make this a time where you're having, you know, meaningful, constructive conversations and you're creating, you know, meaningful experiences because it's the experiences that are going to affect our character at the end of the day. That's correct. 100%. So exactly. Khairan, everybody. So alhamdulillah, you won't believe it. It's already been an hour and we talked about how quickly time goes. So I'll just, before we finish up, I'll get everybody to, to give us some uh, closing comments or uh, uh, tips or suggestions. I'll start with Sister Jahina. Yeah, I've got a quote I'd love to share here, as I feel mindset is so important during challenging times. It says that none can destroy iron, but its own rust can. Likewise, none can destroy a person, but his own mindset can. So if we work on having a very healthy mindset and trying to keep it as strong as possible throughout lockdown, inshallah, we will all get through this. And we can focus more on connecting and creating positive memories. And then one day we'll just look back at this and we'll realize how resilient we actually were as adults and how resilient our children were as well. Jazakallah khairan. Um, sister, sister Anissa, there was a question for you. And then if you can give us your closing comments after that. Uh, yep, just reading the question. Yes, excellent question. So writing down five things, and look, some people are visual, and if you are a visual person, it's great to have a visual board, even if it means you've saved images on your phone and you screenshot it, and you can limit to even three, and especially with the younger children because they're visual, and when you're doing it with your children or you're doing it as a family, you take out a piece of paper and pen, and, and whether it's pictures, whether it's, you know, sentences or statements, it's really important to be able to guide the children because, you know, they might focus on things where it's, you know, pleasing the parents all the time. And I always break it up so they sort of know it's something, you know, what am I grateful for from a spiritual perspective? What am I grateful for for what I've done maybe, I don't know, around the house? And what am I grateful for in terms of what I've done for myself? And, and another thing that I get my children to do, and they've always done this, is, is how do I want to feel when I wake up tomorrow morning? And writing that down, when they wake up in the morning, they actually feel that way. I feel happy or I feel energised. And as I said, if you don't want to write it down, um, print out the pictures if you've got a printer or save it on like, you know, there's if you're tech savvy do one of those boards um you know and but do it together collectively um as a family too it's extremely extremely powerful and if you can get into journal writing you know it's very therapeutic to sit there and write and i'm a big believer of journal writing i've actually got journals from the last 15 years and my daughter loves that she actually sits there and reads through from the last 50 years, oh, my God, at uni it was like this and, oh, my God, when you first got married it was like this and it, just to see her mum now and to see the changes and even for myself to reflect on. And that's the thing, we don't, you know, reflect. Um, we become very reactive and so it's really, really important to do that so you can always, you know, be reflective in everything that you do. My tips of advice now, um, enjoy 
every single moment. There's a hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that we don't value our health and we don't value our time. And as Brother Munir was saying, like the time just goes by so quickly. So value your health and value your time that you have and enjoy that time. And, and I can't stress enough is to create, as Reem was saying, like, you know, preparing a meal together. Have meaningful, even if it's it's not about the uh, like quantity, it's the quality, create meaningful experiences together. Like my daughter and I just picked up last night. It was before, it was about quarter past eight and it's like, okay, nine o'clock is curfew, the choppers are going to get out. And I had to go to the centre. We decided to instead of, you know, taking the car, walk there, stop it you know, um, Oliver Brown, grab a hot chocolate, come home. It's just a small little experience, like, you know, that we develop together. So focus on those experiences um, and, yeah, and communicate. Spend really quality time with your children. When your children grow up, they're not going to remember the materialistic things and the money that you spent on them. They're actually going to remember the quality time that you spent with them. It's so important as parents to remember that. Jazakallah um, khairan. Sister Reem? Wow, uh, that was amazing what Anissa said, Mashallah, so many great points. Um, I guess I would just say something new that I've um, developed in lockdown, which has changed from my previous lifestyle, it's something benefit, is try to go to sleep earlier and wake up earlier. I've seen such a massive improvement in my health just by making that little change. Um, instead of staying up all night, sometimes we find ourselves just scrolling through our phones or watching a TV series or something, switch it off, switch the TV off, switch the phone off, go to bed early, and wake up and chase that sunrise go outside go for a walk take a cup of coffee for you with you if you can't go you know if you can't walk much um but at least just just try and take in that sunrise and just see how it affects you and how it changes the rest of your day that would be my little tip for tonight Jazakallah khairan. Uh, brother Munir. um I think I've started with the hadith of Rasulullah at okay. the beginning of how the ummah is like one body. Uh, if one part hurts, then the whole body suffers as well. So, um, subhanAllah, we are in, in the uh, are you okay day uh, in lockdown. So just going back to how Rasulullah was um, with his community. So we're here tonight talking about how everyone is doing. Uh, not just the uh, you know our, our own family, but as 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 one ummah, we are one family. And um, if if we are to look back at the seer of Rasulullah Sallam, uh, how he was, um, how his lifestyle was, you'll be amazed, Subhanallah. Um, Rasulullah Sallam, he knows his companion, his Sahaba, you know, ch all the children, all the women in the community. He was the Imam. He was the 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 Prime Minister. He was the uh, the doctor. He was the Sheikh. He was the the counselor. He was everyone, every like every everything for every for everyone in the community um subhanallah amazingly not only by he knows everyone in the in the community not just just by name or by culture or by body type or by skin color uh but he used to know them um inside outside he knew the things they like or they hated he knew their personal and family or even health issues that they have subhanallah so um and and you know Subhanallah, if you are to look at the screen now, we all came from, I, I'm guessing, from different backgrounds, subhanAllah. But we're here together today and talking for the entire community. So one tip that I will give tonight, subhanAllah, get connected to your community. This is Islam, subhanAllah. You know, as Muslim, you need to get connected. And, you know, this lockdown, subhanAllah, proved that um, being part of a, 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 the, the wider community, it benefits you. Subhanallah. In fact, um, brothers, may I remember today, um, you know, we were in a meeting. I, I've got a phone call. A brother calls, look, brother Munir. Yep, um, my wife died. Just like that. And um, mm -hmm. uh, just, just like that, subhanallah. And the first thing I said, look, are you connected to the community? He said, yeah. Alhamdulillah. I was so happy. Because they live far away, in, in not in one of the big cities, far away somewhere in Queensland. So, and I knew that this is the importance of uh, being part of the community. That's why uh, Rasulullah used to go and ask. In fact, 
again, you know, if you are to go into his daily schedule, you will see between Maghrib, between Asr and Maghrib, he used to actually go and visit the sick people, the elderly, um, those who are in need. After Asr, it was his community work. He was asking about every individual in the community who, who can remember. I need to go see Umm Ayman. I need to go ask about Julaybib, ask about, uh, you know, Ammar, ask about Bilal. This was happening between, between Asr and Maghrib, subhanAllah. That was his job. Making sure everyone is fine, everyone is doing okay in the community. In fact, um, subhanAllah, we had a big problem. Uh, you know, a, a brother that died in a, um, somewhere in, in um, uh, border town in, 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 in the border between South Australia and Victoria. The body was taken by funeral service. The, they, they don't know where to take it because he wasn't part of the community. SubhanAllah. And then we have to call them here from NZF. Uh, I just Googled Islamic Society Masjid in the area and I had to contact the brothers at 1 a.m. during the night and tell them, look, there is a body of a brother. Uh, I think they're going to, Allahu alam what they're going to do with the body, but it looks like no one is going to take care of it. And subhanAllah, as we all know, if we don't take care of this brother, we all as a ummah, we are in trouble because we haven't honored the body of this Muslim. So I, my, my advice is for, every, for everyone in the community, get connected somehow so that at least, at least if something is to happen to you, you know, or something to happen to your loved ones in the community, everyone would know and attend your janazah, the janazah of uh, your loved ones. They could come together and, and direct you to the, to, to the services. SubhanAllah. So don't wait until this happens to you and your family. So this is my advice. Get connected as it was. Rasulullah connected to everyone. Zakallah, brother Sorry, brother. Can I, can I just add on what brother Munir was saying? Because sure. people always ask, how do you, how can you understand other people? Because it was one of the greatest gifts of our beloved Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And the strategy in terms of understanding other people is to always believe, and this is the trait, and this is why in his work he was so successful, our beloved prophet, was to always believe that the person who is calling you or who is in front of you or who you're speaking with actually has a trait within them that is better than you. When we can develop this in our heart, we will have that level of understanding. And if we can, in, during this lockdown especially, rather than focusing on the message, we've got to pray, we've got to fast, yeah, we've got to do all of that, we've got to do our Qur'an, all of that. Let's focus on the method of the message, which was his emotional intelligence, his um, interpersonal skills, you know. The actual method, method is more effective than the actual message. So just, sorry, yeah, I had to tap in on that. There's so much we can probably go on all night, alhamdulillah. But just to finish up and explain to, just to show you the, the day that we have, I mean, we were just discussing this afternoon on the meeting with the story that Manir was relating. And uh, it was just yesterday we were the, uh, assessing the sister uh, whether she's eligible for the help that she needed. And um, uh, we were umming and ahhing, we, we had a shura, what we normally do if it, for complex cases. And in the end, we, we agreed that yes, the, the sister or the family is the eligible and we've allocated the zakah money to, to, to help the sister. Um, so the, today we were on a meeting and the, the brother called and he said to Brother Munir, look, uh, Alhamdulillah, I, I don't, we don't need the help anymore, um, but my wife has passed away. So immediately we were sad from that, but we, we were happy as a team because we, have, we gave her her right of, of zakah before she passed away. So we were saying like, what if we were still delaying and umming and ahhing and then it was her right, and then we will be um, re responsible for that. And then the brother said, look, um, I'm just going to go on, 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 on WhatsApp now, and I'm going to collect some money from the community so that I can bury my wife. And we said, no, 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 brother, don't do that. You know, uh, 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 we will help you bury your wife. So even people feel like they have difficulties in their life, they lock down, they can't go out further than the five kilometers. There are people who have um, more difficult challenges in their life. And um, just to say Jazakallah khairan to our, all our pa uh, pa guests for your time and advice. And NZF, National Zakah Foundation, our organization is there to provide the hope and the care for, the, for, the, for those who have nobody else as well and for those who have people. 
whatever it is you need, whether it's financial, physical, mental, reach out to us because we have great service partners that's providing the services that all our community needs. So I hope people have found a benefit in, in our session tonight. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions, the sisters, I think they've put all of their the Instagram connections there. If you have any questions, friends that have reached out to us and uh, uh, wishing you all a safe, to stay safe with this pandemic and that may Allah accept it from us and we'll all meet in Jannah to fill those Allah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.